Okay, so here's why Prey was the best Predator movie. Spoilers ahead. Duh. Premiering last weekend and already receiving a massive outcry of encores, Prey is a 2022 American action horror film based on the Predator franchise by Jim Thomas and John Thomas. It is the fifth installment in the franchise and a prequel to the first four films, taking place during 1719 inside the sprawling Great Plains. Here we see in the new American frontier that there's more than just wild animals and settlers to worry about. Our protagonist is a young Comanche Indian woman named Naru. And like most other arrows of life, people don't take Naru nor what she says seriously because she's a woman. Until the environment has a new top predator introduced, pun intended, and that shatters the natural order of the ecosystem. The predator, aka the Yacha or Hishquitin, are an elite alien race of skilled hunters. Throughout the franchise, we discover that due to predator culture, Every predator we see in series are actually all heavily decorated hunters, confirming every kill they've ever made to lose on a hunt is to disgrace their people. Therefore, we know that the predator Arnold Schwarzenegger and his squad battle was either disgrace or a greenhorn hunter. Either way, he died, but the predator we glimpse now is missing all the bells and whistles we come to know. His cloaking is much more primitive. His projectiles are magnetic based and made of metal versus the insane plasma casters we've gotten used to. And this archaic predator does have a few gadgets that we do get to see. The typical predator wrist gauntlet, a homing crossbow, the classic predator crush knife, along with a wrist mounted shield and dual collapsible spear. This changes the game as in the 1987 film, the predator picked off an annihilated Arnold squad with far more ruthless and sophisticated technology. Prey is a true battle of the hunter becoming the hunted. Like seriously, that's all it is. But this leads me to my next point. One of my favorite things showcased in this movie was the significance of the title, Prey. The Predator never targeted a single prey animal. He wasn't roaming around essentially killing deer. He stalked, cornered, and killed all of the predators of the respective food chain. With the exception of the mountain lion, which Naru and the other Comanche battled, the specific examples of this take place with the rattlesnake scene, Predator's sad encounter with a rather keen-eyed wolf, and of course the most epic battle between Earth and aliens you've ever seen in the form of Predator v the Bear. But even when hunting the Comanche warriors, he didn't move until they killed a stray possum, signifying their status as still a predator. This confirmed when Naru was caught by the Frenchman's trap and Predator with curiosity realizes she is not the threat but she is also someone else's prey, something he does grow to regret later. Now, despite fanboy criticism, Prey shines so brightly in my opinion due to its premise and execution of said premise. Unlike the recent Predator movie, we don't get cheesy one-liners or drawn out speeches, we get the primal display that is Predator versus Prey. The massive respect to accurately depict the Native American actors along with respect and showcases of the Comanche culture also stood out to me. And one part I loved was after the Predator killed the Red Mohawk Comanche and showed itself with a massive war to signify his dominance, the Comanche warriors, to their own credit, do not run nor turn away and snap into battle against the Predator. Granted, after light wounds and a brief scuffle, the two warriors fall to the Predator. In the movie, we also get to see the historical accuracy of settlers and European occupation beginning to affect the Comanche way of life. And in this, the French are worse than the Predator in my opinion, resorting to beating Nauru and even after speaking to them in their own tongue of French, bleeds Nauru's brother, who went on to, in a weakened state, absolutely work the Predator in a close range both fall. Okay, let me, let me step in. So honestly guys, the Predator is a creature who fights with honor. He doesn't want a easy fight. He wants something that is a satisfying kill or he would not even pursue it as a worthy quarry. He would have just shot the wolf, the bear, and Naru's clan mates if that wasn't the case. He never had to engage any of these people and could have been more reminiscent to the predator Arnold Schwarzenegger had to face. But he fought literally everything head on, even the Frenchman. Predator literally activated his last option rich gauntlet not because the French were a threat to him but because they outnumbered him and I legitimately think he didn't care to continue the battle because they were just cowards. And this is supported by the fact that the Predator took the wolf's skull. Granted, yeah, he clapped the wolf easily at that. But the fact that that creature even was able to see him and wound him led the Predator by his code of honor to kind of immortalize the wolf as a skull on his belt. And he probably also did this to the rattlesnake and definitely did it to the bear though they didn't show it off screen. And we even get to see him decapitate the Comanche warrior who briefly withstood him in a fight but not before literally disarming him. And something to note is that as with the Frenchman's trap, Predator isn't omnipotent, he can be tricked and wounded which is why he didn't allow the rattlesnake to bite him in my opinion. 
every animal he encountered could also detect him, thus why the wolf wounded him and the bear effectively won by mauling his ass by using his sheer weight. Naru has to use the knowledge she gained from being hunted by the predator and watching the predator hunt to defeat it. The entire movie, they show her remembering and watching the predator's movements, habits, and equipment. This leads to an epic struggle that some fans aren't satisfied with because I guess they just wanted Naru and the entire tribe just to get fucking murdered. Which, for one second, let me explain. Do any of you know how dangerous the Comanches were? These were a warrior tribe not only rich in culture, but brutal and skilled in combat. The 1700s, Comanche had several real life accounts of beyond human level feats of archery. Examples how her brother perfectly nailed a red tail hawk mid flight against the wind. The Comanche warriors were more in tune with nature far more than Arnold was in a 1987 movie, and he won. So I think people need to accept that primitive man versus primitive predator is a fair matchup if predator isn't simply just trying to stealth kill them. Unlike Arnold with mud, Naru learns and uses the plant known as the orange tootsia. To describe the flower, it's kind of hard to determine whether it's real or only exists in Prey's universe. However, with that said, the flower seems to have many similarities to the Catanlua plants. Just like the ones depicted in Prey, Calendula flowers are bright orange in color and have been used for both culinary and medicinal purposes for centuries. Like during the Civil War, the flower was also used for stopping blood flow from battle wounds, just like Naru uses it to treat one of the French fur trappers after the predator slashes his leg off. This leads to Naru's only real defense against the predator by disabling their heat-based vision. And this makes me say it, Naru literally was playing 3D chess with the predator. From engineering the entire scenario after shooting the predator in the back of the head with the pistol, to the bog area, which was a ploy to reduce predator's ability to cross the distance, which ultimately left his kill options as simply shooting the annoying human that had done all this right. And this is where it gets controversial. Some people believe there's no way predator would make this shot, but not know what his own gun would do. But after being shot in the back of the head, losing an arm, being impaled, slashed, stabbed, and shot with arrows by various other Native Americans, I'm sure the predator didn't consider his helmet was on and targeting reticle was in his face. He literally looks at the mask at the very last second, and this is a movie. This was accelerated for the viewer and cinematic effect. The bolt dumped Predator's metaphorical and literal shit faster than he could have reacted to. And let's not forget the true MVP of the movie, and that's Sa'ari, the dog. That dog saved Naru's life from a bear and the Predator on two separate occasions, throwing the Predator's aim off when he most certainly would have killed Naru, and delivering Naru's hatchet to her so she could kneecap the Predator and literally set up the win. And the dog lived. I was biting my nails the entire movie, hoping, praying, another pun, willing that the dog did not die. But overall, I'd rank Prey as a movie at a 9 out of 10. It pays homage to the older movies, explains more detail on Predator's hunting habits and what they can truly do without all the gadgets and gadgets. And the respect to Native American culture is the true gem here. As often, especially with streaming service original movies, we all know they can absolute oversell and bomb a product. And my last point is that the entire movie was basically just Naru's Katamiya, a Comanche rite of passage. This was basically an ancestral rite of proving yourself, hunting something that's hunting you, and guess that's why the movie was called Prey, huh?